welcome. Have you experienced a time when you were emotionally in the depths, or physically, or mentally? Maybe it was suffering ill health or other troubles, and there seemed to be no way out. Some of you listening to this might be facing that kind of situation right now. You don't know whether, how or when it's going to be resolved or what the future holds. Turn with me to Psalm 40 and we're going to read the first five verses. I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the slimy pit out of the mud and mire. He set my feet on a rock and gave me a firm place to stand. He put a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see and fear the Lord and put their trust in him. Blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, who does not look to the proud, to those who turn aside to false gods. Many, Lord my God, are the wonders you have done, the things you planned for us. None can compare with you. Were I to speak and tell of your deeds, they would be too many to declare. David, as is revealed later in the psalm, is in a time of trouble. He looks back on his past experience and what God did for him. As he looks back, he describes his past experience as being in a slimy pit. In Old Testament times, they had huge cisterns dug into the ground to hold water. Periodically, we read of someone being thrown into a cistern, Joseph or Jeremiah, for example. Often they'd be empty of water, but muddy in the bottom. When Jeremiah was lowered into a cistern, he sank into the mud. Looking up out of such a pit, in the ground with vertical sides slimy towards the bottom and then with deep mud which had sunk into there would be absolutely no hope of climbing out. That's the image that David uses. As far as we know this wasn't a literal experience of his but that is what it feels like. Maybe you've been in a situation or are in one which feels like this. You're completely stuck and there's no way you can get out of it on your own. David's story is that when he was in this place, whether it was when King Saul was uh, pursuing him to take his life or whenever it was, he was utterly helpless and the Lord lifted him out of it. The soft mud was replaced by solid ground, giving a firm place to stand. The pit in which he was trapped was replaced by open air. As David faces a difficult situation now, he looks back on God's help in the past and that helps him to trust God now and gives him hope. So there's a good place to start when we're facing trouble. How has God helped you in the past? Sometimes it may be by lifting you out of a situation. Sometimes it may be by giving you strength and whatever you need to cope through it. David is not only aware of God's goodness in the past, but convinced of the blessings he has in store for the future. This is true of us too. Who knows what plans and blessings he has for us in this life, but he also promises us far greater blessings in eternity with him because of what he's done through Jesus in dealing with our sin and defeating death. David's reaction when God rescued him from this dreadful situation was to turn to praise. We're brought up to say thank you, but sometimes it's just a quick thank you and then it's forgotten. David sings heartfelt praise and you have the sense that this is not a brief thing for the moment, but long lasting. He longs too that others will come to know and trust the Lord and his story will help with that. Our stories of God's work in the past can be a great source of encouragement for us now but can also be a great witness to others if we share with them what God has done for us. So when you face hard times, or if you are right now, when it feels humanly speaking that there's no way out, don't descend into despair. Look at what the Lord has done in the past. 
Look at his promises to you in scripture for the future. Talk to him and look to build your trust in him. And when he brings you through, don't forget to praise him, really praise him and to share what he's done for you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for the many things that you have done for us. Most of all, of course, through your son, Jesus Christ, but so many things day to day. Help us to remember, to recognise when you're at work. Help us to thank and praise you. And we pray that those memories would sustain us, that our past experience of you would encourage and help us through situations we face now and in the future. In Jesus' name. Amen. That brings us to the close of our series in the Psalms for now. We may well come back to them at some other point. But on Monday, do join me again as we begin a series in Paul's letter to the Philippians. In the meantime, God bless you.